during your job when you get a problem you try to do deep research at that point of time and see what are the different interesting ways in which you can solve this new engineering problem digging around design patterns and when i say design patterns i generally do not like the idea that you just start learning 10 to 15 or design patterns and see okay this is the problem this is the design pattern i would say when you are actually reading try to actually sometimes also see some coding implementation for a few things here and there people have all of the knowledge that you need in order to clear the round but the thing is they are not able to present their thoughts well you are definitely in a good place to be hired so if you are somebody who is planning to prepare for system design rounds and you are having some interview scheduled for let's say 2 to 3 months from here then this is the right video for you in this particular video i'm going to talk about a 2 to 3 month strategy that can actually help you to prepare for low level design machine coding rounds as well as high level design rounds and this strategy is something that i also used while preparing for my uber interviews and meta interviews while being in a full time job this is something that a lot of people actually seek for because a lot of students who are actually working somewhere in a full time job get very less time for the preparation so what should be a 2 to 3 month strategy that can help you to reach this particular goal is something that we are going to talk about in this particular video so without any further ado let's just start but before starting the video if you have not yet subscribed to the channel do consider subscribing because we are going to put some really awesome content coming up ahead regarding tech and your career in tech also if you have not yet checked out the channel of algocam do check it out because we are putting some really awesome dsa content absolutely for free on that youtube channel check out the link in the description section below and let's just start so before we start this particular video i wanted to actually talk about a very small thing so this video is going to actually help you understand a real system design interview scenario we are going to try to mimic a 45 to 60 minute kind of like a round where we are going to solve a problem very similar to how you will solve a similar system design problem in this short time frame now of course when you work as a software engineer in a company you have relatively larger amount of time and you can do a lot of more deep dives in even very small level features but in an interview the temperament is different the approach is different and a similar scenario is actually explained in this particular video so do consume the content based on that also if you want to see more deep dives and want to understand these topics in a much more deeper level concepts then do check out the link in the description section below for our system design 2.0 cohort where we have talked about a lot more concepts in a lot more detail which will make you definitely a better software engineer so let's just start the video now what i believe is if you are planning for a lot of interviews and you know that a lot of them will be having lld plus hld rounds my take would be start with the preparation of low level design why because to be very honest in low level design the amount of reading that you have to do is likely less and it's more about practice so the faster you cover the theory the more time you will do you will get for practicing the questions i would say start with the basics of object oriented programming pick any language if you are somebody who is very comfortable with typescript pick that golang pick that java c sharp whatever is comfortable for you pick it you are going to get easily all the coding implementation and with ai tools like chat gpt uh, copilot cursor you can generate the code if you have the code in any other language so language should not be a constraint start with the understanding of object oriented programming in the language that you are preparing in because the concepts can vary here and there once that is done immediately start learning solid principles understand what are solid principles easily see some four to five examples of violation of these individual solid principles and how you can actually improve them because all the design patterns that you are going to learn at least 70 to 80% of them are going to be some simple i would say resolution of a solid principle violation so start with that and have the examples ready for solid principles see why they are violating and what you can actually do in order to resolve them so see the violation and the resolution as well once that is done then i would say start digging around design patterns and when i say design patterns i generally do not like the idea that you just start learning 10 to 15 or design patterns and see okay this is the problem this is the design pattern no i don't think that's a very good approach to go for start with practicing problems right so let's say if you want to uh, learn about observer pattern try to maybe have a simple machine coding problem picked around a stock broker application if let's say you want to learn strategy pattern 
try to pick a simple problem let's say around a rule engine or let's say something around stock exchange right because these problems are actual problems that are asked in real lld rounds so first it will give you the actual practice scenario you can do a end to end application make sure that it's a running end to end application as well as you will be able to learn a design pattern altogether right so i would say learn the most frequently asked design patterns if you ask me for a list i would say definitely learn strategy pattern observer pattern builder pattern right uh, there is something called as a criteria pattern which is very useful in a lot of situations do check that out chain of responsibility patterns factory pattern right these five to six patterns are very very important you need to make sure you have good grasp on this right and then i'll list down the top 15 design patterns that you should definitely keep in mind before actually going for an interview right i'll put that list somewhere let's say in the description section below and with these let's say 15 design patterns that you learn if you are solving a new problem with these 15 design pattern then technically you have already solved 15 different interesting problems post these 15 problems i would say stop reading more theory it's not going to be a game of theory now it's going to be a game of practice start practicing more questions right so let's say if you spend 2 to 3 weeks in this initial activity then every week pick two problems in a time bounded activity initially start with let's say 2 hours and then start reducing your time and also review your solution and pick the most frequently asked questions in interviews like parking lot problem stock exchange like problem right um order management system hospital management system library management system right these are some very frequently asked questions something like let's say game related problems like snake and ladder like game or let's say chess tic tac toe these kind of gaming problems right and every week solve two problems review your solution good thing would be that you get some external review done maybe with some friends or let's say you are part of some community altogether and start practicing this for the next two months this is going to ensure that in actual LLD round you do not lose your thoughts a lot of student face this problem that when an actual LLD round come they don't know how to structure their problem they don't know where to start from which class to start how to do it because they have not actually practiced that on their coding environment so practice is the is going to be the key here so start with this and just solve two questions if you are having a lot of time maybe three questions every week and absolve it like have a one and a half hour session try to code as much as possible if you are not able to complete see why you are not able to complete what functional requirements you are not able to match and what not if you are not able to find questions i would say check out lead code discuss section you will get ample amount of questions there or you can also check out the system design course at algocamp there we have put a lot of actual company related problem pdfs that you can use and try to absolve and practice as assignment now high level design is something that i recommend people that when they have completed their theory part for lld start with a high level design round and if you are somebody who is going to have interviews in let's say next 2 to 3 months don't be in a research mode don't be in a phase that let's say for any single term that you are seeing you are reading 10 to 30 articles all together or trying to read a research paper see the deep research time is the time when during your job like it's my opinion to be very honest that during your job when you get a problem you try to do deep research at that point of time and see what are the different interesting ways in which you can solve this new engineering problem when you are preparing for interviews in interviews they most of the interviews are not going to ask you to come up with a absolutely new problem statement altogether the problem statements are generally pretty much well defined so you need to make sure that your preparation strategy is right on point now in order to make sure that your preparation is right on point start with the basics of high level design see there are some very fundamental principles in high level design that everybody needs to ensure in every single um i would say design consideration like what is functional requirement non functional requirement understand what is back of the envelope calculation now a lot of people in their interviews just start randomly putting calculations in place see there are some problem statements for which initial calculation is not going to make a lot of sense unless you have the a good consideration of the design ready so you need to understand why the back of the envelope calculation is done like for example if let's say you calculated that the storage of a particular scenario is going to be too high then there is a good chance that one single storage unit might not be even feasible because you will not be able to store all of that data at at single place and efficiently query that as well so these back on the envelope calculations are something that you have to use in order to derive conclusions if a problem statement cannot have conclusions uh, derived from these then you can delay that envelope calculation as well but you need to know how to do it 
so read about these ml of calculation and read about fundamental um i would say uh, things that are very important in high level design for example what is event driven architecture what is a cache and what are different caching strategies right what is a write through cache or write around cache and so on read about all of these caching strategies and read about cache eviction strategies as well right read about what is a load balancer what are different different types of load balancers right what is an l4 and l7 load balancer read about communication protocols and communication standards like communication protocols like what is tcp why do you need it what is http uh, what is https right what are web sockets etc and communication standards like if let's say you have to prepare apis when to use rest what are rest standards rpc some type of rpc graphql when do you need graphql and so on read about databases that what is what are databases and try to read about basics of them first that how do you query a database and then start leveling things up what are asset properties why do you need asset properties specifically try to have good emphasis on isolation levels what are different isolation level what will happen if you do not have isolation levels in place what are some concurrency related problems that can actually come up once that is done then start reading about scaling your infrastructure that okay how do you scale your application servers how do you scale your databases what are the problems that can come in scaling the databases like you might have to do repli- uh, like in order to in- improve the reliability and durability you might have to do replication right what are the problems that can come in replication what are the strategies of replication master slave architecture multi master architecture right and so on so these are some of the fundamentals that are very very important if you want a good resource on that i would highly recommend that you check out a youtube playlist that i have attached in the description section below right this playlist is uh, by the same person who actually wrote the book of designing the data intensive application i have gone through this playlist like n number of times uh, and this is one of the most interesting and fantastic resources to go for right this playlist actually is slightly on the difficult side to uh, side to understand so if you do not have a lot of time maybe you can try to just check the summary of that maybe use some ai tools and generate the summary but this is kind of like a gold mine also uh, you can also check out uh, the algocamp system design course because there we have made sure that we do a lot of things oriented specifically towards your interviews in even in high level design so try to understand distributed systems try to understand different different type of clocks and all of these concepts why because there will be different problems in which you will need different type of solution different type of techniques you will need uh, in some particular set of problems design consideration around your databases is very important in some other type of problem your end to end flow is very important so all of these things you have to start reading out and i would say when you are actually reading try to actually sometimes also see some coding implementation for a few things here and there this will actually help you to concrete your thoughts a lot because once you have read all of these things next phase will be to actually start structuring your thoughts specifically for interviews now doesn't matter how much you have prepared because you are preparing for last let's say 1 to 2 months in the last month i would highly recommend you to start giving mock interviews see the fundamental problem that a lot of people actually face in system design rounds is that they are not able to structure their rounds people have all of the knowledge that you need in order to clear the round but the thing is they are not able to present their thoughts well you need to make sure that your high level design round should look like a complete end to end story structure of a actual engineering problem like when you get a engineering problem in your day to day work what do you do you first of all go to your pms and get a functional requirement done then as an engineer you try to f- figure out the non functional requirement and then in the v0 that is let's say the basic product implementation you try to have the functional requirements done you do not start immediately implementing the scaling strategies right same thing you have to do here figure out the functional non functional requirement if you have to do some calculation estimations do that and then first of all have a very basic design that just solves all the expected functional requirement do not go unnecessarily into scaling strategies sharding strategies etc etc because that complexity you will get time in let's say the last 20 to 25 minutes but the initial i would say 20 minutes should be focused on functional non functional requirements calculation if necessary and having a basic design ready if you are an engineer who is even able to create a basic design ready and then able to give thoughts and suggestions to scale up that design you are definitely in a good place to be hired right so this is what you have to focus on first get all the basic functional requirements done and have a 
simple flow don't over complicate don't unnecessary have so many components and you are not able to manage that figure out why do you need to destructure a component into a separate component all to all together what kind of a database do you actually need for all the basic stuff and then once you have done this start doing a deep dive into non functional requirement how will you achieve the non functional requirement how will you actually achieve the numbers that are expected in terms of the traffic right there are some dedicated numbers that i believe everybody should keep in mind that for a good amount of scale let's say if you are using kafka then for a good scaled uh, server of kafka you will be able to very easily handle 1 million events per second right so now think about in your system let's say if you have introduced kafka how much events you are actually expecting if you are expecting less than 1 million then you don't have to unnecessarily over optimize things right kafka will be able to easily handle it but if you are beyond that then that's the point where you will be able, you need to actually start thinking and start implementing some smart strategies here and there right what are some of the basic set of qps that a mysql single instance and i would when i say single instance i don't mean an instance running on a laptop on a good scaled aws machine what is the general qps that a mysql machine is able to technically handle if your scale is less than that why do you need to over optimize things right always keep in mind that a simple solution a simple engineering solution is always preferred than a very complex engineering solution and that's what you have to structure start giving mock interviews maybe to your friends or try to maybe join some community and have some people actually giving your uh, taking your mock interview there or there are a lot of mock interview services also in the market nowadays you can opt in for any one of them i don't have any uh, names on top of my mind but very very important to actually give mock interview so that you understand how you perform in those 50 minutes or 40 minutes and how you are able to gather your thoughts at least try to solve 10 to 12 high level design questions same thing for low level design as well at least try to solve 10 to 12 low level design questions for uh, in these mock interviews so that you know which particular part you are lacking see you cannot be in a situation where you know that okay i'm able to code a machine coding of chess but you took 6 hours to do that you have to probably do that same thing in let's say in an hour so you also need to make sure that the requirements that you are giving both in low level design and high level design is enough to be completed in 1 hour or 1 and a half hour whatever is the route so these are some of the things that you have to keep in mind while doing the preparation right in terms of resources i would say for as i said for high level design the martin klepman um, i would say playlist that i'm going to link in the description is going to be a game changer if you have a lot of time you can of course read the book but the playlist is also pretty awesome for low level design i would say start reading some medium articles whenever you are picking a design pattern try to see some actual implementations of that design pattern and try to see where exactly in real world uh, problems it is getting solved plus use lead codes discuss to get the previously asked question of the corresponding companies because that helps a lot in actually solving those problems and getting all of the markers that you have to keep in mind for the solution in actual routes so these are some of the things that i believe you should definitely try to do if you are preparing for a system design rounds and you just have 2 to 3 months left i will list down all the resources that i have talked about in the description section below and again if you want a more structured way of going through all of these system design use cases do check out the system design course on algo camp that is going to be really really helpful for all of you that being said let's wrap this particular video here we're going to meet soon in the next set of videos till then take care bye bye i'm sanket singh signing off